Lighthouses have been around since the pharaohs of Egypt, guiding ships through the choppy waters and letting them know of safe passage. Oftentimes, these stone structures can prove to be in precarious locations. Subject to the powerful forces of nature and the might of the ocean waves, here are the top 15 most dangerous lighthouses. Number 15. St. Joseph Lighthouse Sitting on a pier just outside of a small and quaint town on the eastern side of Lake Michigan is the St. Joseph Lighthouse. Built back in 1832, the St. Joseph Lighthouse is a steel structure with 24 feet on one side and a pyramid roof. Sitting on the top of the roof is an octagon-shaped tower that rises another two stories above the main structure, and a catwalk will take you from the top of the structure back over to the pier. But if you're about to make that walk, just make sure that you're not doing it during the winter months, because that's when things can get really dangerous. The 30-foot-tall lighthouse is subject to the North Breakwater at the mouth of the St. Joseph River, and once a year, the lighthouse becomes one giant wind-blown icicle. And that includes the catwalk, too. It's not the type of place you want to be caught at during a rough nor'easter, or any kind of winter storm for that matter, and you can bet that the wind chill is going to bring those temperatures down well below zero. The cast iron doors are also frozen shut during this time, so anyone left in there better be stocked up because they're going to be in there for a while. Number 14. Point Bonita While the Point Bonita Lighthouse in the Marin Headlands may live up to its name in terms of aesthetics, it's still a dangerous lighthouse due to its treacherous location. Even getting to the front door means going for a half-mile hike through those ocean breezes that can often turn into strong winds, with salt water whipping you across the face the entire way. But there is a hand-carved tunnel in the rock along the route as well that turns into one mean wind tunnel when the weather gets a little too crazy. Point Bonita has been around since 1855 and stands at about 33 feet tall, but the structure itself sits on the rocks at about 130 feet above the water. And while you may be safe inside this lighthouse, it's really the area itself that makes it a dangerous place. The waters of the San Francisco Bay are known for being pretty rough, so you can only imagine the type of waves that are crashing on the rocks at Point Bonita. But over the almost 200 years since its inception, there have been at least 300 shipwrecks in the surrounding waters. The United States Coast Guard maintains the light at the Point Bonita Lighthouse, and while the purpose of the structure is to let you know that you're close to the harbor and the current is rough, it's up to the ship's captain to get you there safely and soundly. Number 13. Muro Island Light If you're ever setting sail towards Spain, you may be greeted by the Muro Island Light in Santander. The lighthouse on Muro Island is pretty well known among seafarers and lighthouse enthusiasts, and for good reason. But it's not because of how easy it is to get to. The lighthouse here was built on the uninhabited island of the Bay of Biscay and was built around 1860 and required two crewmen to keep things up and running. And when they were working there, it was just the two of them cooped up in there for months on end. The lighthouse is meant to withstand the brunt of even the toughest storms that the Atlantic Ocean can throw at it. But in 1865, that came at a great cost when one of the lighthouse keepers lost his life after being swept into the sea. Then, 30 years later, another keeper died inside, but because the island is so difficult to get to, his body was kept there until the sea calmed down. A third incident occurred when a lightkeeper's son slipped on the rocks, falling to his death. Because of the treacherous locale, the Muro Island light is now automated, and while it may have a bit of a grisly and dangerous history, it still serves as a navigation point, but is closed to the public. Number 12. Eddystun Lighthouse like it or not, lighthouses need to be tended to, so it's important to make sure there's a safe and somewhat convenient way for the keepers to get there. Maybe they can walk along a catwalk or take a small boat to get to work. So it's one thing to have a lighthouse maybe one or two nautical miles from the shore, but what about when it's even further away? The Eddystone Lighthouse sits a whopping 12 nautical miles southwest of the Plymouth Sound in England. There's a landing pad on the roof because the only way to get to the Eddystone Lighthouse is by helicopter. So, if that's not your preferred method of transportation, then it's best to view this one from afar. And it's an even more precarious ride when the winds and tides are acting up. Just make sure you don't look down. But why is the Eddystone Lighthouse so damn far from the shore? Wouldn't it be easier for everyone if it was built closer to civilization? Well, it turns out that the reef in that area can typically peek its head over the waters of the sound during low tide, making it incredibly dangerous for the passing ships, especially since this area gets so much traffic, too. 
But despite how dangerous it may be here, it's been rebuilt four times since its inception, proving just how important that landmark is. Number 11. Cape Romaine Lighthouses Built in 1827, the Cape Romaine Lighthouses are a pair of lighthouses that sit in a national wildlife refuge on the coast of South Carolina. Today, they have a very important history on their island of Raccoon Key, warning seafarers about the dangerous shoal ahead. And the older of the two lighthouses even played a role in the Civil War when the Confederates put out the light so that the Northerners wouldn't be able to properly navigate the rough waters. But today, the Cape Romaine lighthouses are almost completely abandoned. Neither one has been in use for the last 60 years or so. During the 1940s, the area started to see less and less ship traffic, and so officials decided to use lighted buoys offshore since the upkeep is much easier. And while the newer of the two, who is 30 years younger, may be in somewhat decent condition, it's the older lighthouse that's rapidly deteriorating. It's made with a classic red brick and cone shape, but the interior is mostly made of wood, which is now rotted through, and the interior staircases are totally gone. But erosion isn't the issue here. It's simply time and lack of upkeep. A lack of money is what's keeping the Cape Romaine Lighthouse from its former glory days and is essentially on the verge of collapse. Number 10. Strombolicchio Lighthouse Probably one of the loneliest lighthouses out there is the Strombolicchio Lighthouse in Stromboli, Italy. A month-long stint at the Strombolicchio Lighthouse may sound like a pretty cool vacation for some, but when you realize that you're the only person for miles, things may turn sour before you know it. This lighthouse sits upon a volcanic formation in the Tyrrhenian Sea. This remote beacon was built over a hundred years ago in 1905, when the tip of the island was blasted off to make a flat space. But it actually sits on the basalt rock, which is the only remains of the core of a volcano that eroded away some 200,000 years ago. From afar, the lighthouse probably looks like a castle, and according to Greek mythology, the once volcanic island was even home of Aeolus, ruler of the winds and controller of the weather. So what makes the Strombolicchio Lighthouse so dangerous? Well, aside from the winds brought to you by the courtesy of the Greek gods, you have to hike up the island to get to the structure. The trip is incredibly dangerous because of the steep cliffs, the aforementioned winds, and wet rocks. So just imagine a lighthouse keeper having to make that trip. Just another day's work, I guess. Number 9. Point Sewer Lighthouse Station Driving up the Pacific Coast Highway can offer some pretty breathtaking views, and things really get exciting when you reach Big Sur. The cliffs and the ocean view are breathtaking. But what about putting a lighthouse there, too? Well, that's what happened in the late 1800s after a ship managed to dash itself along the rocks near Point Sur. So the Point Sur Lighthouse Station was built in the 1800s to prevent any future tragedies. But on top of the treacherous waves and the impending doom promised by the rocks along the coast, the new Point Sur Lighthouse Station was an incredibly remote area. So should anything happen to the lighthouse keepers inside, it was going to be a long time before any help came. And getting a message out back in the archaic 19th century was a task in and of itself, so anyone and everyone working inside for weeks or months at a time needed to be self-sufficient, healthy, and hardy. As we've seen with previous entries on our list, just getting there was a long and arduous feat in and of itself. But luckily for the folks who risked life, limb, and even sanity to man the Point Sur Lighthouse Station, the Coast Guard automated the light in 1972. Full-time keepers were no longer needed. Today, the station is open to visitors as long as you've got good hiking shoes. Number 8. St. George Reef Lighthouse Another dangerous lighthouse off the beautiful California coast is the St. George Reef Lighthouse. The 12-story tall lighthouse has a rather interesting history that began with its costly and arduous construction in the late 1800s. For starters, at least five construction workers lost their lives by the time of its completion in 1891. Life inside the finished product wasn't much better either. Even though the St. George Reef Lighthouse saved a countless number of maritime vessels from devastating shipwrecks, there were plenty of keepers who requested transfers and even more resigned from the station. There were even reports that some keepers went mad, suffering mental breakdowns from the sheer and prolonged isolation. Supplies had to come by launch, and those short interactions were typically the only ones had by the keepers until their work was done. The St. George Reef Lighthouse is known for having a lot more of these stories than other stations. The supply boats had to be hooked on the large boom at the bottom of the station and then lifted up to the deck. 
but there were countless times when storms were so horrendous and the tide was so high that the upper deck was completely flooded, meaning no fresh supplies for the men working inside. One storm in 1952 was so bad that it crashed through the windows of the lantern room 150 feet above sea level. Much of the lighthouse was flooded. The dangerous lighthouse was eventually replaced by a buoy in 1975, but the station still stands, although abandoned and deadly. Number 7. Ano Nuevo Island The next entry on our list is obviously another dangerous lighthouse, however it's dangerous in a different type of way. Ano Nuevo Island in California was once connected to the mainland by a bridge, but rising sea levels eventually buried the bridge, isolating the island. The Ano Nuevo Lighthouse sat on the nine-acre island along with a mansion and a small home for the lighthouse keeper, all of which, save the tiny home, no longer exist. After being abandoned, the lighthouse and the mansion fell into such states of disarray that they were beyond repair. But after humans left the island, nature decided to take over Ano Nuevo Island, when tens of thousands of sea lions decided to not only call it home, but use it as a breeding ground. But the lighthouse was beginning to sag and proved to be a real threat to the island's new residents, and had it fallen, it would have proven to be catastrophic. So the lighthouse was torn down in 2000 to keep the local wildlife safe. But sea lions aren't the only beasts to live on the Ano Nuevo Island. The island is also surrounded by great white sharks who are all probably hoping to make a quick meal of a sea lion or two who slip into the water. Number 6. Capraya Lighthouse Imagine you're at the top of a lighthouse, enjoying the views of the Adriatic Sea and Italy's Tremiti Islands, until you suddenly realize that Tremiti is Italian for trembling. As it turns out, that situation is the reality for the Capraia Lighthouse. There are plenty of lighthouses out there that may be dangerous because their walls are cracking and crumbling due to erosion, and while the Capraia Lighthouse may risk falling apart, this time it's because of earthquakes. This dangerous lighthouse was built back in 1868 and is attached to a two-story keeper's house. Luckily for that keeper, this lighthouse has been out of commission and abandoned since 1980. The island is now completely uninhabited and the only way to get there is by boat. But with the risk of earthquakes and 200-year-old stone raining down on you, why would anyone want to pay it a visit? Because no one has paid it any mind in four decades, it's very likely that when the Capraia Lighthouse does finally come down, no one is going to notice. If a lighthouse falls down on an island and there's no one around, does it make a sound? Number 5. Truebridge Island Lighthouse There was a time when the British Empire was the largest on Earth, and their rule reached far and wide. And when you're traveling by ship as much as they were, that means you're going to be relying on lighthouses at night. The British built plenty of these during their heyday, and one standout is the Truebridge Island Lighthouse. This dangerous lighthouse sits off the York Peninsula in South Australia and was meant to guide mariners past the Truebridge Shoals. Built in 1856, the Truebridge Island Lighthouse is 79 feet high and made of cast iron. It's withstood earthquakes and fires, but there's one thing that's been chipping away at it for almost 200 years, time. Centuries of erosion and salt have been slowly but surely eating away at the lighthouse, and it's now in serious danger of collapse. With each passing day, the structure stands closer and closer to the water's edge. When the sea rises in the winters, the foundations are in danger. It was a precarious place to work and luckily taken out of service in 2002. But things have gotten so bad that sandbags are used to hold the sea at bay, which sounds like more of a band-aid than it does stitches. Number 4. Galinos Lighthouse We've taken a look at a lighthouse that risks falling into the sea. But here's one entry that is already there. The Galinos Lighthouse in northern Brazil is still standing, but its base is well in the water during high tides. The Galinos Lighthouse was opened in 1931 and built on land, but once again erosion has had its way with the 45-foot tall structure. Brazil actually leaves all of their lighthouses under the control of the Navy, who normally does a pretty good job. But for some reason, the Galinos Lighthouse doesn't fall quite under that category. And it is still active today, but it's pretty clear that its time is running out. It stands on a sandy beach and is a popular tourist attraction, but lighthouses are definitely not meant to exist half in the water. Tell that to the Galinos Lighthouse Keepers. Number 3. Kipsare Lighthouse If you ever get the chance to go to Kipsare, Estonia, right on the Baltic Sea, you may have to do a double take and ask yourself if you're staring at the Leaning Tower of Pisa. 
What you're actually looking at is the Kipsare Lighthouse, also known as the Leaning Lighthouse. It stands at 82 feet tall and it's having a pretty tough time standing upright because of the complete lack of supporting ground. The Leaning Lighthouse was built from reinforced concrete in 1933 when it stood properly, but erosion and changing tides have had their way with it. Operating it is a seriously dangerous and foolish task, which is why it was deactivated in 1992. The beach where it was built has all but washed away, and when the tide is just right, the lighthouse lies in the water. By the early 2000s, it was leaning over by about 15 degrees, but the tides managed to correct it. And while that does sound like good news, think again, because it only means that the waves have done away with even more sand under the lighthouse's base. There are no plans to remove the leaning lighthouse, so the chances of it staying up are worse and worse as each day passes. Number 2. Bishop Rock The lighthouse on the Isles of Scilly, Bishop Rock, is one of the most remote lighthouses in the world. It also sits on the world's smallest island with a building on it. This record-holding lighthouse was built in 1818 to avoid the consistent shipwrecks that were happening over the years due to the dangerous waters. There was an original tower here which was built on iron legs and then washed away during a storm before it could ever be lit. So they tried again in 1851 with a more sturdy design that called for stone. All of that was great, but because Bishop Rock is so secluded, getting materials, supplies, and workers to the island was one tough task. There were so many complications with the lighthouse's construction that it almost became more trouble than it was worth. Sure, it was built to stave off any future shipwrecks, but that doesn't mean it calms the water down. Anyone attempting to get to the island to erect the lighthouse had to brave the ocean's mean currents and the area's typically poor weather. Luckily, no one was killed during the lighthouse's construction, but there were plenty of injuries and close calls, and because getting a lighthouse keeper there proved to be so dangerous, it was finally automated in 1992. Number 1. Le Carillon the lighthouse, simply known as Le Carillon, began its service in 1916, just off the coast of Brittany in northern France. The water around the island Le Carillon is built on is known to the locals as the Great Fright, because the violent currents can easily reach nine knots. But lighthouse keepers still need to get there. The construction was incredibly difficult and took a full decade to complete and earned the nickname the Palace of the Underworld. Imagine reading something like that in a job description. So getting there to start off with, a keeper's shift must first mean getting a small boat to brave the torrents. And once they make it to the island, the real fun begins. An apparatus with one end attached to the island structure is then brought over the small boat, and each keeper hops on one at a time, holding on for dear life as they're slowly reeled up the lighthouse. It's pretty insane, and is only made harder during the frequent storms that cause huge waves to crash against Le Carillon. Watch our Waves playlist for more Top 15 videos about massive waves. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best wave videos.